Hello humans, welcome to the less connected show on the internet. Lately I've been wondering if I could handle a challenge like November, where you have to pull out an achievement every day, limited by a different prompt. So in this video we are going to do just that. If you're new here, on this channel we do artistic challenges, to create visual art and music using all kinds of tools, mostly open source software, to demonstrate that what really matters is your approach. In particular, in this show we explore art in the nerdiest way possible. So if you want to see how long will take me to rage quit this challenge, keep watching. I'm Artificial Marvin and you're watching The Nerd Inside. By the way, this video was supposed to come out in December, but between the pandemic, my work and various other commitments, I couldn't stay on schedule. Oh, and in the meantime, something huge happened to me, but you'll find out at the end of this video. But let's get back to the video. First of all, let's see what the November prompts are for this year, and maybe do a little research on what users have made for November in previous years, just to get some ideas. Ok, apparently the artwork are always very descriptive, they usually represent exactly what is described in the prompts, and because of this the ones I have found are very similar to each other, but this year they decided to propose prompts that are a bit vaguer, in order to leave room for user's creativity, and this will be convenient for me and will make my life easier, as I have decided to add a further limitation to the challenge. In fact, I'm going to use a different program for each prompt in the challenge. Ok, here we go. The first prompt we need to work on is three-sided. I have to admit that I have absolutely no idea how to deal with these prompts. They are too generic for me to come up with anything specific. Luckily, I usually post abstract artworks on Instagram. So I think that the best way to proceed in this case is to improvise and see what I can come up while trying to follow the prompt as best as I can. Let's see what I can come up with. For this first prompt, I decided to start using Blender's brand new node system. I was expecting to be worse. In the end, I used a very basic approach, but I think the result is very interesting. I started with the first three-sided thing I could think of, a prism, and simply broke it down into other prisms recursively. In the end, since good lighting pretty much makes up 90% of the work, I tried to light it in a way that made it look appealing. In addition, to give it some movements, I randomly animated each triangle using node power, and with a couple of camera movements, I brought home the first prompt. For this prompt, I decided to use pure data. The fact is that I've never used pure data before to generate graphics. In fact, it is an application that is more oriented towards audio programming. But it also has modules that allow you to generate 2D and 3D graphics. Since it is a project born to emulate Max MSP, I hope that the way to generate graphics is similar. I first looked at the examples in the presets and tried to modify them so that I understood how they worked. As soon as I felt I was ready, I decided to start with the prompt, once again by improvising. I managed to generate rectangles that moved randomly around the screen, but the result seemed a bit banal, so I started again, this time using a three-dimensional space, and following the prompt very literally. So I arranged all the cubes in a rectangle and placed a colored focal element in the middle to attract attention. The result is interesting, but not outstanding in my opinion. For the third prompt, I decided to follow the same path as the previous ones. Using a different program each time, I need to simplify the process a lot if I want to get a decent result in time for the deadline. So I used a prism with five sides as a base. Then I iterated the process by distributing new prisms within the first ones. After that, I tried to make the composition interesting by using animations and creating an appealing atmosphere with the lighting. What I found particularly intriguing in this artwork were the interpenetrating geometries 
creating almost a glitch effect, as happens in digital videos, and I tried to emphasize this aspect with the lighting, trying to give the idea of chromatic aberrations produced by a camera lens. For the fourth prompt, I decided to use Touch Designer, a visual programming environment aimed at creating multimedia applications that I have always wanted to try out. This time, I had to study a lot of tutorials online in order to feel confident in making the prompt. So, in the end, I simply looked for the tutorial that gave me the closest result to what I wanted to achieve. And then I modified the script slightly and played with the parameters until I found a satisfactory result. And apparently, I had so much fun playing with it that I completely completely forgot what the original prompt was. The only reference to the prompt is that I used 6x6 six six rows of cubes, but only now do I realize that looking at the artwork you can tell that. For this prompt, the idea was to use a game engine to create the artwork. I chose Godot because it has a node system for shaders, so I thought I could use it for November. Unfortunately, I couldn't understand the logic of the program, and after 20 minutes of trial and error, I decided to give up. I didn't expect Godot to cause me so many problems, since as you can see in this video, I've already used Godot's shader programming language to create some materials. I thought the node system wouldn't be so different. So I went back to my dear old Blender. Since I spent a lot of time in Godot without getting any result, I opted once again for a quick and easy solution. As with most of the previous artwork, I created spheres recursively, and I hoped that with the good lighting and decent animation and framing, I would be able to achieve a good result. And indeed, the result result is one I enjoyed the most so far. For this prompt, I went back to using pure data. This time, I tried to use a feedback loop to create the artwork, because feedback loops are cool. For this, I was inspired by a live patching that Antonio Roberts did on the Coding Train YouTube channels some time ago. I leave the links in the description. And as expected, it turned out to be a very interesting result. For this prompt, I decided to cheat a little and use Praxis Live, which is a programming environment based on processing, but allows the various scripts to be connected together via a system of nodes. So yes, I'm cheating, but at the same time, I'm still using nodes. I used just a few rectangles and replicated a portion of the screen to create a sort of kaleidoscope effect. And anyway, the end result was honestly not great. This time, I went back to my comfort zone, using geometry nodes together with my most used technique so far, recursion. I duplicated a 3D shape and animated it, until I could get something interesting out of it. For this prompt, I wanted to use Max, but I admit that due to the lack of time, I directly used one of the examples provided by the program as a starting point, and modifying it for a while, I managed to obtain a fairly decent result. Although, I must admit that starting from scratch always gives greater gratification. This time I decided to recreate something similar to some artwork I posted some time ago on Instagram, in which I used only lights and shadows over completely white geometries to create the illusion of three-dimensionality and to highlight that lighting also changed our perception of shapes. You thought I was giving up using Godot on this challenge? Well, you guessed it. Or rather, I tried to reuse it in this prompt as well, with the idea of creating a small pixel art city with the generative approach. So I tried to figure out how to automate the tiles using the nodes in the program 
but again I had to give up and I had to go back to my beloved blender for yet another time. This time however I decided to use Sverchuk as the node system and the idea is to create a kind of rotating artifact trying to emphasize its small size by using lighting, a wide angle lens and effects such as chromatic aberrations and vignetting in post. The result is a very interesting artwork in my opinion. For this prompt I tried to replicate the idea of the previous one, using Blender as it has more control over camera lenses, lighting and post-production. I just experimented with different shapes and animation to obtain an original result. For this prompt I decided to use V4.js, which is a browser-based version of V4 that allows you to use Node to create visuals. But unfortunately I couldn't find a way to export a video of what I made. I know I could screen capture the screen with OBS, but apparently I'm too stupid to have these ideas when I need them. So in the end I decided to make a change again and go back to Blender once more. For this prompt I decided to go back to Touch Designer and this time I tried to improvise. The idea I wanted to recreate was a moving landscape, so I simply created a plane and deformed it with a random function. Unfortunately the result is not quite what I expected and apparently I liked it so little that I even forgot to post it. And we have arrived to the last prompt. For this last prompt, I had to make the idea of something huge. And the first thing that came to my mind associated with these words was fractals. Geometries that are so huge that you can zoom in as far as you want. Initially, I wanted to create fractals in 3D, but then I found it easier to use two dimensions. This artwork is also very interesting, although not the best so far. So, how do I feel about this month spent challenging myself for November? Very well, in fact, I should say great, many of the artworks produced exceeded my expectations and even one of them was exhibited for a week in the streets of Tokyo on 85 screen. In fact, I was contacted and invited to be part of the Neo Shibuya TV project in the district of Shibuya in Tokyo by the New Media Art Instagram profile alongside very prestigious artists. It was a really cool experience for me and for that I'm happy to have been involved in November. By the way, if you don't, follow me on Instagram. So, what did we learn from this experience? That putting yourself on the line and challenging your comfort zone can produce unexpected results. It can even get you an exhibition in Tokyo. Let me know in the comments what you think about the artworks I have produced during this month. What do you call a factory that makes okay products? A satisfactory. Dear math, grow up and solve your own problems. What did the ocean say to the beach? Nothing, it just waved. A skeleton walks into a bar and says, Hey, bartender. I'll have one beer and a mop. If you liked this video, please give me a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button. Until the next challenge, as always, thank you for watching, bye humans! In this video I put myself to the test with time. If you are interested in 3D modeling with nodes or simply enjoy watching me suffer, you should watch these videos.